before, that's after. Before, after. Pretty cool look, I'm quite happy with it. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk about references. References are extremely important for a colorist because clients usually come in with a bible of references. Could be from movies, music videos, commercials, could be paintings. And I think paintings are actually very interesting because it's not light blasting through a screen like it would be for music videos, commercials and movies. It is paint on a canvas and it's very different, right? Uh, the dynamic range isn't the same. Um, the color palette is quite unique and dense sometimes. Uh, sometimes it's quite difficult in order to replicate some of these characteristics with like digital footage, right? Uh, but I'm going to show you in today's video how we're going to take a look at this painting, which is from Edward Hopper. And it's, uh, it's a classic, right? Um, and I want to see if I can get inspired from that painting for today's look. And of course, it's not going to be about replicating one-to-one -one what we've got here, but just like how I can be inspired with some of these elements. Um, could be that like shiny wash, could be that sort of like complement with the warmer tones and, and, and that, that cyan world. Uh, could be the texture, could be the contrast. We'll see what we can steal from that. But the point is, I'm not trying to replicate the look from a movie. I'm actually getting inspired from a different sort of medium, uh, which sometimes could be from like centuries ago, right? And I think it's quite magical. So let's see what we can do today. Today I'm working in a color managed project, so all the operations that I'm going to do are happening in DaVinci White Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate. In my first node, okay, I'm going to go into my HDR tab and I'm going to like inject some of that greeny, cyany, you know, feel because I think it's looking pretty nice, right? Let's see if we can, you know, borrow that from the painting, basically. And I'm going to call this node balance. Now I'm going to create another node, which I'm going to call contrast. And I just want to um, pop open my RGB curves right here and I want to kill some of that detail in the shadows uh, because right now I'm seeing a lot of detail in the shadow I just want to like compress that in order to get a bit of that painterly feel and I'm doing that by lifting my blacks, so my blacks are compressing with the bottom shadows of my image. Uh, so I'm doing it like that. I'm happy with that for the moment. I'm going to create another node, and I'm going to go into my color slice, and I'm going to bump my saturation. I can look at my vector scope and have the trace match a bit more, right? To have a closer colorfulness saturation. I want to go back to my contrast. I'm going to go into my red channel and I'm going to tint my shadows with some of that, like cyan. I 
want to keep the skin tone not too affected by that move but I, I want to hit like the shadows with it and I want to add a bit of warmth in my highlights just a tiny bit So I'm happy with that for the moment. I'm not so happy with like the density of, of my colors, like the yellows are quite vivid and vibrant. Um, I just want to add another node and I want to address that. So I'm going to go into my color slice and I'm going to add some density. So that's before and it's after. I'm going to go into my curves, I'm going to go into my hue versus sat. I think I'm going to increase like my saturation in, in my cyans and blues slightly. Um, yeah, I'm quite happy with that for the moment. I just want to address the texture now um, because it's looking very kind of digital here. Let's go for the film look creator and drop it here. And I'm going to go clean slate. I'm going to go grain, enable grain. There is some kind of a, you know, it's the texture of the canvas, um, but also from the layers of paint, but it's basically not smooth. There is some texture here. So let's see if with adding a bit of grain, maybe 16 millimeter grain. Yeah, increase the amount we can get something nice from that measure the focus let's see let's play with that to like soften my image that's before that's after i'm going to for the sake of like youtube compression Going to crank a little bit the amount of grain. That is helping, right? Um, let's call that texture. And yeah, I mean, just having a look at a painting, right, just inspired me to create that look. And I think it's cool because you can be inspired from whatever you feel right for a project. And um, why not paintings? I think it's so fun. So that's before that's after that's our look before after before after so i kind of build it on the fly today with you guys but that is what i would usually do when it comes to creating a look like stacking elements until i'm happy with what i see on uh the display so yeah it's not many nodes right so five nodes and uh i'm quite happy with the before and after and that's a look that i could apply on the shots as well i'm pretty sure it would uh, translate pretty well or a whole scene but yeah and when i reach that point i can also 
go further, right? If I feel like I want to add other elements that I can do so, it could actually be fun. Let's go with an accent of color, actually. So I'm going to, after my saturation node, I'm going to create another node. I'm going to go into my color slice again. And I'm going to hit my yellow vector. I'm going to add some a bit of saturation in my yellow vector. So that's kind of like grabbing, that yellow is grabbing a bit our attention. Just a hint of saturation from our yellows, basically. All right, guys, that's it for today. I hope that you enjoyed this look tutorial. Uh, I certainly had a lot of fun to um, go through it with you. Follow me on Instagram because there I'm sharing breakdowns of some of my past projects. I'm not sharing that on YouTube, so uh, it's going to pop open somewhere. Um, follow me there, it's going to be uh, interesting. And you're going to also see the kinds of projects that I work on as a colorist. Also, subscribe to the channel to not miss the future amazing videos that I'm going to make, obviously. Leave a like, smash it, smash the like button. Leave a comment so I can know what you thought about it. If you want to react, I'm always super keen to read your comments. I'll see you in the next one. Also, leave somewhere here a link to another look tutorial that I've made in the past if you want to see some more. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now. Take care.